Nobody wins when the family feels But my s John's football expertise. He remained a North Shore stallion. John's love for basketball began at the Pittsburgh Project, Urban Impact, Allegheny Elementary School, Allegheny Middle School, and Alderdice High School. Five other people are responsible for a deadly shooting in the city of Pittsburgh. These five people are charged in the August shooting in the city's California Kirkbride neighborhood. One man was killed and three other people were hurt. Police say 58 shell casings were fired from eight firearms. Prosecutors say the video is presented in court today show the gunman responsible. But the defense argued that while the video may depict a shooting, it's not possible to see who was there nor whom fired. Evidence during a preliminary hearing today for 21 year old J. Lone Hines. He is accused in the shooting on Pittsburgh's north side where three people were killed, including two innocent bystanders. You can see a number of shots were fired onto Cedar Avenue. Today, none. You need to stop with this violence. You need to love each other. You need to communicate with each other. You need to reason with one another. This isn't the way. There's, this isn't the way. This is out of hand and it's constantly going on. I don't know who did it. I do not know. I was in there in the service. I have no clue. But what I do know is that this was senseless and it makes no sense. It's too much. It's too much for our community, whether we, we be in our home community, whether we're in this outside community, having the service here in Brighton Heights. It's too much. It's too much for everybody. It messes with your psyche, all this trauma constantly. This is complex trauma day and night, day and night. It's going on two years and we just starting to get some answers in regards to some viral daily shootings that happen in Pittsburgh. For people who don't live in Pittsburgh, you might think of the Pittsburgh Steelers, Pitt University, or even the Skyline when you think of Pittsburgh. But today we're going into the inner city on the north side and talk about a group of young men who authorities claim made a game via social media. Quoting, we don't have what you consider traditional games like you had it in the 1990s and early 2000s. During his press conference at the police headquarters, he continued to quote, we have groups of people. They are affiliated through interests, through social media that sort of come together. They have no geographical boundaries at this point in time. Now I did my research and on the north side of Pittsburgh, it's known for Crips. But today, we're going to go into details about a couple shootings that went viral. A man funeral getting shot up, two innocent bystanders losing their life at a bus stop, a young man who cut his ankle monitor off and then had the nerve to have a video jail call while showing the ankle monitor to his friend. Not to mention, the guy who's allegedly responsible for shooting up a funeral and cut his ankle monitor off was on camera about to shoot a clerk inside a store. But thank God, the gun had jammed. So without wasting too much time, remember family, I don't give you no angle. I just give you the story. So with that being said, make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. We're gonna jump right to it. Fam, meet John James Harnassus Jr. He was one of three people who lost their life on October 15th, 2022. May they rest in peace and love and condolences to their families. The other two were innocent bystanders, two females waiting at a local bus stop, Jacqueline Mihalik and Betty Everett. This incident happened on Cedar Street, Pittsburgh, Northside. Footage of later come out to show John and his friend would be shooting back, but it seems John had lost his life in the process. His two friends would get arrested and later charges dropped. J. Lone Hines and Churn Troutman. As we got a new look at new surveillance video just released from another shooting. This video was introduced as evidence during a preliminary hearing today for 21 year old J. Lone Hines. He is accused in the shooting on Pittsburgh's north side where three people were killed, including two innocent bystanders. You can see a number of shots were fired onto Cedar Avenue. Hines and a 19 year old man are facing homicide charges. Hines is also charged with conspiring with John Hornes Jr., who was 
was the third person killed in that shooting. A couple days later, John will have his funeral and his enemies will be spotted up outside. Even knowing local enforcement was on the scene, as soon as they left for a moment, they sprayed it up. Check the footage inside the church that was live streamed. To enlist John's football expertise, he remained a North Shore stallion. John's love for basketball began at the Pittsburgh Project, Urban Impact, Allegheny Elementary School, Allegheny Middle School, and Alderdice High School. Now we're gonna stop it there, but this is the suspects outside the church. That Ford truck with them. They saw the police and they went back to the alley. When that Ford truck let them know that the police left, as they mentioned in the news clip, as they had to alert to another location for a second, which they regret, they used that one moment, fam, and came back. Now we're gonna stop it there, but six people were shot and a horse. Breaking news, we're getting some new information about today's shooting outside the funeral in Brighton Heights. And Channel 11's Rick Earl joins us live. And Rick, I understand you just learned that the police officers that were requested by the church were not there. Yeah, that's right, Lisa. Multiple uh, family members here outside the hospital were telling me this afternoon the police officers were supposed to be at that funeral, but they say no one ever showed up. Now, I did speak with a law enforcement source just a short time ago. They confirmed that two officers, two Pittsburgh police officers, were assigned to that detail. Uh, but those officers at the very last minute were pulled for another assignment. After completing that other assignment, those officers planned to return to the funeral and that's when the shots were fired and the shooting broke out. Again, my source telling me it's not normal procedure for Pittsburgh police officers to attend these funerals, but they suspect there might be, there was somebody anticipating possible trouble at that site and that's why those officers may have been requested in the first place. Again, those officers pulled for another assignment and then they were going back to the church and when they were on their way back, the shooting happened. I also asked my multiple law enforcement sources about efforts to increase and beef up manpower, police manpower. This weekend in light of any possible retaliation because of that shooting. Multiple officers tell me they have not heard any requests go out yet for increased manpower. And frankly, a number of them tell me given the severe staffing shortages the Bureau is experiencing right now, that would be a rather difficult task to complete. So you heard what they had to say, family. But those two people was later arrested. They was teenagers. And they both had a lot going on at the time of the shooting. Sean Davis to the left, 18, and Hezekiah Nixon, 16. So we cleared this Hezekiah walking in family. Just 16 years old. And then Sean. 18 years old. Now let's talk about how they got caught. Sean was on probation for a shooting that happened inside a local mall. But at that time, he was only 17 years old. It happened at a mall called Rawls Park Mall in PA. Apparently a fight broke out on the second floor of the mall. It was around 4.30 p.m. It was on a Saturday. The police said as many as six people was fighting. At one point in time, guns was drawn and shots was fired. Three firearms were recovered during the investigation. And the only juvenile arrested on the scene, 17 year old Sean Davis. Now while on probation, a year later, Sean would end up taking his ankle monitor off and he would go to a jail phone call while talking to his friend. 
and show him the ankle monitor as if though he instructed him on how to do so. I said you ain't had to cut it or nothing, did you, dog? Cut it? No, you ain't had to cut it. Cut your situation or not? No. Oh, all right. I was about to say. You after? That bitch definitely ain't on, dog. That joint right here. Oh, that's why I'm Oh, <laughs> oh, you gotta do it again. Show three. So he, uh, you off? Uh, <laughs> 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 Grandma, uh, uh, hey, hey, what, hey, what, bro? That joke was about to break, bro. I, I was dumb, like, dog. But I remember you told me, like, bro, you can't be bent. Just yeah, you just got apply pressure on it. Yeah, Grandma, you just snap that off. I'm like, oh. <laughs> Now, that was only three days before the funeral was shot up as well. But the probation officer didn't say nothing. And he had an extensive rap sheet. Two years ago, he almost shot a clerk with his gun jam. Five, a Target 11 exclusive. One of the teens accused of opening fire outside of a church on Friday at a funeral tried to shoot a downtown store clerk two years ago, but the gun jammed. And that incident, like the funeral shooting, was also caught on surveillance video. Tonight, Sean Davis and Hezekiah Nixon remain behind bars in connection with Friday shooting. Channel 11 News got exclusive video of the teens being walked into police headquarters for questioning just hours after the gunfire. The surveillance video from 2020 fighting with a clerk at a downtown electronics store. The clerk tackles Davis to the ground, but then lets him up. On his way out the door, Davis turns, pulls a gun, and tries to fire. But the gun, according to the clerk, jams. Davis then takes off. He's arrested and charged with aggravated assault and prohibited possession of a firearm. One year later, while out on bond, Davis is arrested again and accused of firing shots inside Ross Park Mall. No one is hit. The case is ultimately dismissed after sources say a judge raised identification issues. Davis bond is revoked, though, and in April of this year, he pleads guilty to aggravated assault in that downtown store altercation. According to an email obtained by Target 11, prosecutors recommended three to six years in a state prison based on Davis' criminal history. Sources tell Target 11 Davis has two previous gun possession charges as a juvenile. It's unclear what happened in those cases because juvenile records are sealed. But Judge Tom Flaherty releases him from the Allegheny County Jail after serving nine months of a 10 to 23 month sentence for that aggravated assault. He was placed on six months of electronic monitoring on June 28th. So on the day of the funeral shooting, he should have still been wearing an ankle bracelet. Now, I asked the court administrator if Davis was wearing that ankle bracelet at the time of the shooting on Friday or if he cut it off. They declined to answer that question. I also questioned Judge Flaherty about the sentence. He said he could not discuss it. I talked with the victim in that aggravated assault case as well. He declined an interview but expressed disappointment in both the sentence and the nearly two years it took to resolve that case. Well, we know now, fam, based on the video thus far, he took that ankle monitor off. Now, the day they got caught, Hezekiah Nixon got into the car they used <laughs> to do the shooting. But also, Hezekiah had on him a firearm that had shell casing matching another shooting just days before. There was over 50 shots on the north side of Pittsburgh. He was one of six people arrested. He had two open cases and the only teenager that was in that case. Prosecutors showed new surveillance video in court today that they say proves a 16 year old and five other people are responsible for a deadly shooting in the city of Pittsburgh. These five people are charged in the August shooting in the city's California Kirkbride neighborhood. One man was killed and three other people were hurt. Police say 58 shell casings were fired from eight firearms. Prosecutors say the video is presented in court today show the gunman responsible, but the defense argued that while the video may depict a shooting, it's not possible to see who was there nor whom fired. During today's preliminary hearing, we heard from Casey White. He is the attorney for one of the defendants, 16-year-old Hezekiah Nixon. Nixon is charged as an adult in the August 7th shooting and is sitting in the Allegheny County Jail tonight. He is also charged in connection to the shooting that happened outside of a funeral home in Brighton Heights in October. He's young. He's scared. I mean, he's, you know, he's, he's in solitary confinement for 23 hours a day. Um, you know, he's... A lot of questions are running through his head. These are allegations that are very heavy, um, that carry um, a lot of weight. And after all this time, almost two years later, the DA comes out and say retaliation was the motive behind the shootings. Nothing else. A Pittsburgh street gang war 
Once one body dropped, they retaliated. Some did the same night. And police are saying these two teenagers were involved in a span of 12 months. 20 people being shot on three different occasions and four people losing their life. And that's just what they know. This has to be the story of two of the most ruthless teenagers ever coming out of Pittsburgh. Family, let me know how you guys feel about this one in the comments. Once they trials start and get the rock and rolling, I'll make sure I keep you guys updated. With all that being said, talk to me in the comments. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Until then, I'll catch you guys on the next one.